Welcome to the Chloe Cast, Episode 8, Channel Update, New Show on Bidme, and Other Stories. Hello gamers, I did it again. I neglected the channel. I keep doing this, don't I? No, I haven't released a, uh, another Chloe the Professor in a while, I need to change that. Well, I'm going to definitely do that. Uh, within within the next few days, I'm going to have a new Chloe and the Professor out. And what I'm going to do from now on, I'm going to endeavor to at least get two Chloe and the Professor episodes out a month. Reason I'm doing that is because I've got another new show I'm planning starting in October for VidMe, my channel over on VidMe. And the show is called Game Shame with the Professor. Now, the premise is similar to Chloe and the Professor, except the scope is not quite as big. There's not going to be that whole background story with all the characters. Basically, the premise of the show was it was inspired by uh, when I watched a episode of Jinquisition with Jim Sterling. And he was talking about how the developers of, you know, We Happy Few sold out to Gearbox. And I posted that video onto Gamers Bay and people were going on and on and on about how Jim Sterling just feeds off drama and negativity and they weren't wrong. That's his style. That's that's his style. Now it's not exactly my style. I still watch him. I agree with a lot of the things he says and I disagree with a lot of things he says same time so I, I I don't allow myself to become emotionally invested in the things he says like a lot of other people do I don't let myself become emotionally invested so it doesn't affect me like it does other people because other people they get other people get really emotionally invested in things that other people say when it comes to their favorite games or their favorite console, usually their favorite console, usually their favorite game franchise. And the biggest mistake a lot of people make is that they tie their opinion up with their personal identity. Their opinion is who they are. And if your opinion is different from theirs, it becomes a personal attack. Anyway, I'm getting off track. I saw that and I thought, you know, I could make a show and I've got my channel over on VidMe. Now, I've been putting, I put a few episodes of Chloe and the Professor over there. But I thought, you know, Google doesn't like it when you duplicate content over multiple services for their for their search. They'll they'll remove you from their search results. So I thought, okay, I'll leave the existing videos there and I'll start a brand new show. I'll do every I'll do uh, two shows a month and the new show will be called Game Shame. And what it will do is each episode will highlight one game or one game studio where I just where the professor just basically goes off on them completely goes off on them in a tirade during the first half. Then the second half, he does something that Jim Sterling doesn't do. Suggests ways to fix it. Suggests ways to reverse the negative things that the companies have done. The things that the companies could do in order to change things to get the trust you know, of their players back so i decided that's the sort of show i'm going to do over in vidme the chloe and the professor will continue and i'll be doing at least two episodes of that a month as well and i will be doing other videos as well uh, gameplay videos and live streams i'll continue doing elite dangerous and i may uh, also do uh elder scrolls online little Morrowind 
been wanting to do that for a while now. And uh, I am currently working on getting a new machine. I want a Ryzen system. And uh, the reason for that is I would like to get VR. Because uh, TigerCon plays Elite Dangerous in VR. And so what he's, he's playing VR while we're in live stream. He's in VR while we're in live stream. And I live stream the game on Zork Central and my uh, Twitch channel. So I'd like to be able to do that as well. Because the game is really different when you're in VR. It's really better in VR. That game was made for it. So that's what's going to be happening. I'm going to be doing the next Cloring the Professor very soon. And I'm going to be doing a, uh, I'll, this weekend I'll be doing another live stream of Elite Dangerous. We almost left Elite Dangerous, I'll tell you that story in a moment. And I've got a new show coming to Vidme. The Game Shame with the Professor. And there will be an announcement in the Gamers Bay community as to when to expect that show to uh, come out. It'll be coming in October and so I will be announcing when the show will go live and it will go up on Vidme on the Vidme channel and I'll have a link to that in the um, community once it's up. So head on over to the Gamers Bay community and Google Plus via the link below and uh, join so you can get the notifications. Anyway, as I said, we almost left Elite Dangerous. Now, Tigra had, or currently has, an Orca. An Orca is a big ship. It's enormous. The slot that you can fly through to get into space stations, that is so big that you could stock dozens of 747s in it. And this thing barely fits in there. This is that big. This is bigger than an Airbus A380. This thing is ginormous, and we we play Elite Dangerous Horizons, and Horizons has the add-on where you can land on planetary bases, and you can land on the planet and get out on a rover, an SRV, and drive around. And on the planet surface, occasionally you'll encounter these areas that have these vehicles called skimmers, and these things look like hovering vehicles and how they work in an airless environment, I don't know. I don't know what uh, Frontier Developments, you know, major malfunction with that was. But the skimmers are the vehicles that you sometimes encounter at certain locations and occasionally they're wanted. Pilots on them are wanted so you have to destroy them and you can you can earn the bounty for that. And in order to prevent people from farming these skimmers by just taking their ships and ramming them to earn points, or to, to, to earn the bounties, just ramming them and instantly destroying them, they made it so that the skimmers drop from the sky and then pop up. That way, you don't just drive up, they pop up, you go jump in your ship, fly in and just clobber them. So they nerfed that. The thing is, it happens everywhere. When you go to a ground base, the skimmers that patrol the base, that tr patrol the planetary installations, drop out of the sky when they spawn. They spawn about five kilometers up and drop and then start hovering around the ground and moving around the ground. Now, now some ships you can equip a automated docking computer. And Frontier Developments changed some aspects of that because some players who were using that rammed skimmers as they were trying to land. So they programmed the skimmer, they pro, sorry, they programmed the docking computer to bring the ships in at a high altitude over the landing pad and then lower down. So, what happens when you have a gigantic spaceship that is 
basically the size of an ocean liner. A ship so big you could put the Titanic in it. And you're landing on a on one of the large platforms. And you have skimmers falling from the sky. Well, two skimmers hit him. Now, the skimmers hit him and they were destroyed. As far as the base is concerned, that was considered an attack. And so he immediately gets a bounty and the base's weapons turn on him and blow him out of the sky. And the Orca has, the Orca is like several million dollars to buy it and the buyback cost is like five million, five something million credits. He barely had the credits to get it back. And he almost quit the game and I almost quit with him because apparently this was a bug of people getting hit by these falling skimmers landing at these planetary bases was a bug that hasn't been fixed in several months since the whole dropping skimmer thing was implemented with the last update. And we're going, why hasn't this ever been fixed? And we're playing the game we're trying to have this, you know, cool, chilled experience. And everywhere we go doing these missions, even with missions that say no ships will be sent against you, we're still getting attacked. We're doing a mission where we transport passengers on sightseeing trips. We take them to a sightseeing location and we scan a, um, a beacon and then move on to another place. You have to drop out of Super Cruise to do that. Well, he dropped out of Super Cruise and he was sitting there while his ship was scanning the beacon so he could move on to the next site. And something pops out of Super Cruise and starts attacking him. It's an NPC. And also the NPCs all have names. And so, and then another time he's traveling through space and he gets interdicted by an NPC. He sees the text, he sees what they say. And you can be carrying no cargo at all and these NPCs will say, oh, what a great haul, I'm taking you on. Or, you know, something of that order. Saying, oh, you have something I want and your cargo, your cargo bays are completely empty. And they'll still come after you. And if you don't give them what they ask for, if they succeed in pulling you out of Super Cruise, they'll shoot you and blow you up. And they're usually uh, a higher combat rank than you are, so you have no chance of fighting them. Whatsoever. Because if you get stopped by these guys, and they pull you out of Super Cruise, they're going to gank the hell out of you. And then suddenly you're going to be stuck paying the rebuy cost for your ship and some of these ships have really really high um rebuy costs so you can have massive amounts of investment and hours worth of you know work hours worth of grinding completely destroyed by a single npc and we were just constantly, constantly, constantly being harassed by NPCs like crazy. He's, he's, he was getting it worse than I was. I was not getting it as often, but he was getting it really bad. I mean, we were in the rings of a gas giant and I was mining and he was mining. We were near each other. But every time I turn around, some new ship comes in and he's under attack. Him. He's under attack. Or he's in some other place and all of a sudden a ship comes in and boom, under attack. He has no warrants. Well, we have a warrant now. Dormant warrant. And don't get me started on how that works. I looked at the flowchart and how dormant war warrants work in this game. Designed by committee is being, not, is being nice when I say 
to me about that. When I uh, design by committee is being nice. They really need to. They really need to work this system out. And what the heck is a dormant bounty anyway? I mean, what's the point of the whole thing? I mean, after six days, it wears off. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. And you have to avoid getting scanned by other ships or to reset the timer. It, it, it's weird. So, it was a straw that broke the camel's back sort of situation. And we decided to quit the game. And we told people in various forms. And we had just joined the Mobius PvE group. Private group. And there's a whole thing with that as well, um, where the Mobius group exists because there are trolls and gang, there are trolls and player killers in open play. And this guy named Mobius started the group. Yes, it is. And there are 40,000 people in these in this group. 40,000 people. They have they have separate groups. They have one for PC Mac, one for PS4, and one for Xbox One. And there are 40,000 total across those groups of people playing in private groups because they can't play in open peacefully because they're being attacked. And other people saying, "Oh, we we play in open all the time. We're not attacked all the time." Well, one of the developers of the game made a video. He said, oh, we, we uh, fixed a lot of the problems. We made it so you, that um, they won't bother you so much. Please come back and play open. And he, he's doing it in a live stream. And as he's doing this, he gets attacked by a ganker. He gets attacked by a griefer. On a live stream, trying to convince people to come back to open play. And that exemplifies some of the problems with Frontier development with this game. They sorta kinda listen to their community, but in other aspects they don't. I mean it took it took over 48 hours for them to answer the ticket on you know Tigris ship being destroyed by the uh, dropping skimmers he got his money back for it he still had his ship back because he had just enough he sold one other ship he had in order to get just enough so that he could get his ship back and they gave him back his money for losing his ship and they restored his they restored all the data for that he had collected all the discovery data that he had collected that he can turn in for the systems he's been in but his missions completely failed and those missions you know earn you a few million apiece so those missions were completely failed because of what happened because you have real world, um, they, they follow a real world countdown as to how often you can, how long you have to, uh, do, to do them. Like, uh, some of them are like one or two hours. Uh, the really long range missions will have like several days or weeks on how long you can get them done. And we were really, really pissed off really pissed off and and a couple of days later we sat down we talked and we said you know we, we really really do like the game there are things about it that make us mad and we thought you know we were told one thing and we experienced something completely different maybe if we rethink how we think about this game we might be able to continue and get back into playing it. If we we realize that it's not what we were told. 
We were told it was a space sim sandbox game. It's not. Now, a lot of the game, the majority of the game, is focused on combat. That's the most well-developed part of the game, is combat. Bounty hunting. There is a combat arena. There is, uh, there are regions in space where you go and you do nothing but combat. You go to unidentified signal sources, you go to combat, you go to conflict zones, you go to um, resource extraction sites at uh, planetary rings. And those are areas where you find ships that are wanted and you destroy them. It's all for combat. All those areas are for combat. And a lot of missions are for combat, where you go and you hunt down pirates, or you um, aid a faction that may be in war with another faction. And there's a, there's a lot of those. And so the whole lot, of, most of the game is geared towards fighting. Well, what if you don't want to fight? What if you want to explore? Well, you're pretty much out of luck if you want to do those things early on, because exploration is really an end game thing. Why? Because the, the best ships for exploration are available after you've been grinding for a long time on bounties and other stuff. Uh, the Anaconda is like 100 and 150 million credits. That's the best ship for exploration. It's a, it's a, um, it's a multi-purpose vessel. It carries, it can carry the best weapons and it has the largest equipment uh, bay loadout of all the ships. So you can carry some really good modules, but uh, it takes a long time to get to that ship. And it has massive armor and it has massive shield. The thing is basically a flying tank. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost undestroyable. You would have to go up against another player who's really high, in, a, in another Anaconda who's really high comp with a really high combat rank to take you down. These little mostly harmless enemies that you run across, they can blast your shields all day and hardly make a dent. Especially if you have invested the massive amount of mon money to get the highest quality shields and you went to an engineer and had them modify the heck out of them to uh, make them even stronger now there is the asp explorer and I've got one of those and that's good for some moderate exploration but if you're wanting to do some really long-range stuff like I mean I mean like flying from where we are to Sagittarius a at the center of the galaxy you need a ship like the Anaconda, which fully upgraded and you know, enhanced with engineering upgrades can jump 60 light years in one go. So we, we changed how we think about the game. We looked at you know what it primarily is. It's a space combat sim with an economy some trading and with some trading and exploration and it has arcade like game mechanics where the NPCs that interdict you they don't persist in the world they just they pop into existence try to interdict you when they fail they pop out they vanish they're gone they're not there anymore they leave the game world completely or uh, another time is uh, Tiger was on a mission. He was interdicted by this NPC. And he managed to get away from it. The NPCs are pretty easy to get away from when they try to interdict you, when they try to pull you out of super crews. And he jumped two systems. The exact same NPC was there waiting for him. After he jumped two systems, to interdict him, which is impossible. And 
the reason why this is impossible is because it violates the established rules of the game for you know, how fast your ship is, how far you can jump, and this this um, NPC was not in a very powerful ship. Like he was in he was he is he was in his his orca, and this NPC was in a I think it was an eagle, which doesn't have that great a range. Wasn't that great a, doesn't have that great a range. I used to have an eagle. The best you could get it without going to an engineer was 18 light years in one jump. 18, 19, maybe 20 if you um, if you were really careful with what other modules you used and what your loadout was. And the Orca, when engineered the way he has it, or set up the way he has it, has a much further jump range. So it is impossible, according to the game rules, for that NPC to have gotten ahead of him. But it did get ahead of him. Which means that for NPCs, the game doesn't follow its own rules. So, games that don't follow their own rules, that, that's clearly the strategy used by arcade titles. Where the NPCs don't follow the established game rules, that arcade style mechanics. Really good games have the NPCs establish the same game rules that the players have to follow. So this doesn't do that. So we figured, okay, so this is very arcade mechanics. So getting attacked constantly, getting you know interdicted while in while in super cruise doing these missions constantly isn't the exception it's the rule so we thought okay so when it doesn't happen we relish those moments when it doesn't happen and we expect it to happen because our expectation before was it wasn't going to happen that it was only going to happen when the mission specifically said we were going to have ships send against us or when a message came in saying, oh, we got word that some ships might be coming your way to attack you. You'll get such and such for destroying them if you if you do. So we've changed the way we think about the game. And our expectations have been changed. And it's actually been better. We've actually gotten better enjoyment out of the game after having changed our expectations and changing how we think about the game. It's actually been better for us. The interdictions are not as annoying. They don't come as often. And in fact, the way we're playing the game now, the attacks don't come as often. I mean, before they were just constant, constant, constant. Now, not all that often at all. I mean, uh, until he earns up enough money to be able to cover a rebuy cost at least twice or more, uh, Tiger is flying a keelback, and the keelback is one of the smallest ships that can carry a fighter bay. So whenever he comes out of Super Cruise or his passenger missions, what he'll do is that he will send his um, he will send his NPC. Uh, NPC crewmate out in the fighter. He'll immediately launch the fighter, immediately deploy his hard points, and start scanning the, the uh, visitor beacon for whatever location he's arrived at. And he hasn't been attacked yet. Never yet. Not once. We were only one time we were ever attacked. We were over a planet's surface. We were hovering there. Uh, we have, there's three of us here in this place. So we had another roommate and we, Tiger was setting things up so he could get into VR and try out the fighter flying around because he's got a computer that's VR capable, but he just doesn't have a headset yet. So we, uh, he was setting things up and a NPC flew by and said, oh, let me see what kind of cargo you got. And I saw a ship scan. 
And he goes, ah, you don't have anything. What a what a waste. And he flies off. So I thought, okay, he's he's gone. He's gonna he's fly off and not gonna be an issue. Well, a few minutes later, Tiger is taking off his headset. He's getting his headset off so he can put it on our other roommate and have him try to fight her out. All of a sudden, I'm seeing weapons fire hitting his kill back. And I start yelling because um, we are using the in-game chat, the voice chat in-game. And I start yelling really loud so he can hear me over the speakers on his headset. They're saying, we're being attacked, we're being attacked. And I pull away and I turn around and I deploy my hard points. I'm in my... I'm not in my killback. I have a killback also, but I'm not in it. I'm in my um, Asp Explorer, but I've got missile launchers on that. So I turn around and I start opening up on this guy. And I'm not sure what he's flying. I think he was flying. Uh, what the heck was he flying? It was not an anaconda. It was something else. I f completely forget what it is he was flying. I start opening up on him with lasers to bring down his shields and then I start opening up on my guns on him and I start firing missiles at him and that's when Tiger gets his headset back on and he launches his fighter and his fighter launches and he tells me to basically run run so I get ready to turn around and run and I'm still seeing weapons fire on this guy and I'm thinking you know we can take this guy down so I turn around and I start opening fire back and, and he says, oh, my fighter is getting destroyed. And I'm just unloading on this guy as much as I can. We're just, we're taking his shields down. My missiles are putting a dent, are putting some, something of a dent in him. And he loses his fighter and he has to, uh, he has, takes up like a minute to replace it, to rebuild a new one inside the bay. And during that time, I'm just dancing around trying to get away from this guy, trying to keep away from him. And then he just starts focusing everything on me, and I put all my power into a system to to bolster my shields. But he, he takes me down, destroys my ship. I barely had enough to cover the rebuy cost on it. Meanwhile, while he's preoccupied blowing me out of the sky tiger rebuilds his fighter launches his fighter drops his hard points and proceeds to blast this guy out of the sky and he gets the bounty for taking him down because he was a he was a pirate and he was wanted and i should have been live streaming the whole darn thing <laughs> but it was one of our play sessions that we weren't uh, streaming. I should have recorded it, but uh, this machine gets wonky if I if I keep things set up for for the streaming. If I keep things set up for uh, recording for too long, the USB three on this is is pretty wonky. I've never I've never had a machine where the USB worked perfectly. I mean, I've, n I've never seen a machine where the USB worked perfectly. Anyway, I really should have been recording that. I really should have been streaming that because it would have been it would have been great for it. But uh, I got my kill back back, and it did sort of. I had I had quite a bit of money, and that just completely poof, evaporated that. So, you know, now I've got, uh, as of last night, I've got 11 million now after doing some passenger missions with my Type 9, Type, uh, type 6 transporter. I, modi I modified my loadout from mining to transporting passengers and I've actually, and I'm in uh, the Brestla system. I have been getting a lot of reputation with the um, with the Imperial Inquisition, doing passenger missions for them. So I'm allied with them now, and I've been actually ranking up in exploration because of these missions. 
and ranking up in trade for these missions. So that's where things stand now. I'm working on towards getting a better ship. I want to get a Anaconda. We both do. So that's what you're going to see in our live streams. Um, we're probably going to go off and do some interesting stuff. You know, planetary surface stuff, stuff with our fighters. Because the keelback, aided by a fighter with an expert pilot, is really good for bounty hunting. It is a transport ship, but it has a better hold than the Type 6 transporter. Slightly better hold. Uh, you can equip a better shield to it. It's not the fastest ship in the galaxy. It's essentially a modifi modified version of a Type 6 transporter. It's capable of carrying a fighter. Doesn't have a lot of cargo space. Doesn't have a lot of room for uh, passengers. A lot of room for m passenger uh, cabin modules. But uh, you can do some light transport and you can do some bounty hunting. So you can you can fix a pretty good uh, loadout of weapons on your hard points. And when you hire an expert pilot to fly your fighter, and you pick a really good fighter put in your bay they can kick some serious butt and if you go out to the res the resource extraction zones if you go to the nav beacon in a system in a populated system or you go to um, unidentified signal sources near stations you will pop out there will be local law enforcement in the area and whenever any wanted ships come into the area, the law enforcement will start shooting at them. And if you join in, you get to claim the bounty. So you've got local law enforcement ships blasting the crap out of these high level, high, high ranked NPCs. You've got your fighter and then you've got your ship with a whole lot of hard points. I think there's like four hard, four, five hard points on the killback. Similar, uh, it is similar to the um, the Type Six. It's similar to the Type Six. So you can put the hurt on some stuff. You can seriously put the hurt on some stuff, and the the fighter pilot makes a difference. Now you do have to. You do have to uh, sacrifice 12% of any of your earnings, which go as a payment to your pilot. But you still make a crap load of money with that ship. Anyway, that's what's going on. Uh, I said I'll be uh, doing a lot more content for this channel. I'm going to be focusing more on doing content for Zort Central. I've been doing a lot for Gamers Bay, but I need to do a lot more here. So m most of my focus now is going to be doing stuff for Resort Central. And then twice a month, be doing Game Shame over on VidMe. And I'm going to be doing more Elite Dangerous and be doing some Elder Scrolls, Morrowind, maybe also more Final Fantasy if I go back to that game. I, I still have the subscription for it. I have not finished Heaven's Word. I want to do that, so I may do that at some point. I just had to um, walk away from it for a little while because, you know, if I focus too much on any one thing for too long, it starts getting um, old. Anyway, thank you for listening to me ramble. Thank you for watching the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.